Welcome to Nepal in the centre of the Himalaya. It's a pleasure to join you this evening from Tiger Mountain Pokhara Lodge. Nepal is a land of enormously diverse topography, flora, fauna and humanity, a true melting pot of South and Central Asia. Lying mainly to the south of the main Himalayan crest, sandwiched between Tibet and India, the country falls broadly into three regions running longitudinally across the country from west to east. In the northern third, the high Himalaya. In the middle third, the Pahar, or middle hills, rising up to some 8,000 feet. Then in the southern third, the Tarai, lowland plains that form part of the Gangetic Basin, some 500 feet above sea level on average, and only 230 feet at its lowest point. Three major watersheds drain the Himalaya, join the Ganges Brahmaputra river system from west to east. In the west, the Kanali, in central Nepal, the Narani, known as the Sapta Gandak in India, and in the east, the Koshi river system. In the slides that follow, I will talk about wildlife and habitat in these three bands Himalaya, Middle Hills, and Tarai. The High Himalaya is a frozen land of peaks soaring up to over 26,000 feet, culminating in Everest, Sagamatha, Chongolongma, as named in English, Nepali and Tibetan respectively, at just over 29,032 feet by its latest measurement. Isolated communities of Asian origin peoples live in sparse settlements. Their religion is predominantly Buddhist, following Tibetan traditions or Bon, the Amonist religion predating Tibetan Lamist Buddhism. Wildlife is sparse, with the snow leopard as the apex predator, along with the Asiatic wolf. Birds include Himalayan snowcock, lammergeier or bearded, bearded vulture. Mammals include the recently sighted Palaces cat, blue sheep, goral, and similar goat antelope species. Butterflies of the Parnassid subfamily have had several new species identified from these remote areas of Nepal's high mountains. Now we descend into the Middle Hills, a land of fractured rock strata that shows the unbelievable tectonic forces at play as the Indian subcontinent thrusts under Asia, lifting and curling the Earth's crust. A country of terraced agriculture, hill communities, diverse forest complex with a rich bird life. This is the original home to most of the soldiers serving as Gurkhas in the British Army. Thence down to the Tarai, largely flat country of broad rivers, rich alluvial soils and home to Nepal's megafauna. Suklafanta, Bardia, Chitwan and Kosi Tapu National Parks are in the Tarai must visit places for nature trek guests. Due to the fertility of the land, this is Nepal's most densely populated area. To the protected areas and all corridors aiming to link them play a vital role in landscape level conservation, at which Nepal has had notable success. The Kathmandu Valley, the capital of Nepal, is home to three cities, sadly now emerge, merging into one metropolitan sprawl. Kathmandu, Patan and Bhaktapur, the three cities. The valley is a large dune of some 257 square miles and it has a population of well over two and a half million people. Originally predominantly Newas, who built the impressive Durbar Square complexes at the centre of each city, the picture shows Patan Durbar Square recently restored after the 2015 Gurkha earthquake. <coughs> the valley is host to all the major festivals of Nepal. Here is the Biscuit Jatra in Bhaktapur. In the background is the valley's tall, tallest pagoda, Nyatapola. In Kathmandu, this is the home of the Raj Kumari, the royal living goddess, a prepubescent girl of the Shakya clan who is revered by the Nawaz in particular, but also by the whole nation. Here's a quick view of a popular oasis in the heart of Kathmandu, the Garden of Dreams. 
This was built in the early 20th century by Field Marshal Kaiser Rana, son of the hereditary Prime Minister, from winnings at a gambling festival, and recently restored by a trust led by his son. It is well worth a visit for a light lunch and escape from the hustle and bustle of the valley's chaotic streets. Nepal is predominantly a Hindu nation, with over 80% professing to be Hindus, according to the 2011 census. Buddhists come in at 9%, and then Islam, Christian and animists. We await the results of the 2021 census. Accommodation in the Kathmandu Valley ranges from heritage restoration boutique hotels, such as pictured, up to international standard star hotels. Out walking in the hills and mountains, accommodation is more spartan, in tea houses, simple lodges for travellers, and in the plains, a range of jungle lodges of various standards are available. I would now like to focus on the fauna of Nepal, and let's start with the bears, who inhabit all three altitudinal ranges. So here in the high mountains, occasionally found, is the Himalayan brown bear. The Himalayan black bear inhabits the middle hills and is under increasing pressure from human disturbance. Finally, the sloth bear is regularly sighted in Chitwan National Park. Here's a mother carrying her young cubs. Staying in the Terai now, the Asian elephant is found throughout the lowlands of Nepal but their ranging nature brings them into conflict with human settlements and farmers. Numbers are increasing in Chitwan and Bardia districts and national parks. This photograph is rather dated, but those who know the avid expeditioner John Blashford Snell may recall his seven, several expeditions in Bardia national parks in all organized by our sister company, Tiger Tops. This picture is of Rajagaj, probably the largest elephant in Nepal in the 20th century and to date. Nepal's conservation of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros started in the 19th century when rulers decreed a three-generation life sentence on anyone poaching rhinos. With massive habitat reduction from the 1960s, numbers dwindled, but the latest census shows a healthy, some might even say unhealthy, increased to over 700 individuals, mainly in Chitwan National Park, but also individuals have been moved to Bardia and Suklafanta parks to reintroduce populations in those protected areas. Rhinos love to wallow in the warm weather. Several deer species are easily seen in the lowland parks. Barking, hog, spotted as in this picture, and samba deer are all abundant. The larger species form the main prey for the tiger. Nearing the top of the food chain, we have the epic great cats of Asia, in the high Himalaya, the snow leopard, which is surviving well in Nepal in its extreme and remote habitat, supported by edicts from Buddhist lamas forbidding attacking them, which are far more effective than any laws passed in Kathmandu. At lower elevations, in the Middle Hills and the Terai, the common leopard, once abundant throughout Greater Asia, is now facing diverse pressures in Nepal due to human conflict. At the apex is, of course, the Royal Bengal Tiger. A mother and cub seen here, courtesy of WWF Nepal, who have supported the government's camera trapping campaign to monitor these great cats. Camera trapping for tigers was initiated in Nepal by the late Dr. Charles McDougall, wildlife director at Tiger Tops, the first wildlife safari lodge in Nepal, and funded by the International Trust for Nature Conservation. This project is ongoing, implemented by Nepal Tiger Trust, and now seeking information as to the dispersal patterns of young adults outside protected areas. The Trust has the largest data set on camera trapped individuals within the Chitwan population. The good news is that there are more tigers in Nepal than we know. 
Recently, a tiger was caught on camera in Far East Nepal at over 10,000 feet, so the source populations of the, low, of the lower parks, lowland parks are obviously in good heart. Two species of crocodile are seen in Nepal, among other reptiles. Here is the marsh mugger, the classic Asian crocodile. And here the critically endangered gharial, a specialised fish-eating crocodilian with its slender jaws. Much work has been done in Chitwan National Park to dig out the nests from the riverbanks and incubate the eggs in a dedicated centre, rearing the young until about four feet long when they are released into various suitable river systems. The first eggs were actually hatched at Tiger Tops, another example of the strong links between tourism and conservation in Nepal. New research, as part of a doctoral thesis by Phoebe Griffith, has radio and satellite tagged released gharials and has generated much exciting data. This hopefully will promote more in situ conservation, obviating the need to disturb natural nests. The lesser adjutant stork is the largest species seen in the Tarai. I'm grateful to my friend Maki-san for great dramatic images of birds in Chitwan, including this impressive great egret just taking off. The black ibis is a common sighting on Chitwan's, Chitwan's riverbanks and wetlands. Here is a black stalk on the Rapti River that forms the northern boundary of Chitwan National Park. Another common stalk is this Asian openbill, and a specialist feeder on mollusks, the powerful bill cracking open shells. Woolly neck stalk are seen in Chitwan and also at higher elevations such as in the Pokhara Valley. Peacock are abundant in Chitwan and elsewhere. Heralding the warmer weather in spring, noisy flocks of chestnut-headed bee-eaters are frequently seen. This black-hooded oriole is a good sighting in the lowlands, and its sister species, the golden oriole's call, is evocative of summer days in the jungles. Jungle fowl are a co-ancestor of the domestic chicken, and there are several to be seen around the grounds at Tiger Mountain Pokhara Lodge. Locally extirpated in, in the 70s, the late Colonel Jimmy Roberts, founder of Mountain Travel, reintroduced them to the forests around Begnas Lake to the east of Tiger Mountain, and they have re-established successfully. The Asian Pied Hornbill is, with its co-species, the Giant Hornbill, a key sighting when in Chitwan. Maki-san was fortunate to click this fine osprey on the Rapti River, the northern boundary of the park. Osprey are seen mainly on Fewa Lake in the Pokhara Valley. A variety of kingfisher species are seen in the Tarai and Middle Hills. Ruddy shell duck are common winter visitors in Pokhara Lakes and in the Tarai Rivers. Here is a general picture showing the abundance of waterfowl in Chitwan. Data from the BirdLife International Annual Waterfowl Census in Asia, conducted by Tiger Tops in Chitwan and Tiger Mountain in Pokhara, records impressive numbers of key species. The census is coordinated in Nepal by longtime friend, colleague and collaborator of Nature Trek, Dr. Hem Barrel, who currently heads up the Zoological Society of London's conservation programmes in Nepal. In the Tarai, particularly around Lumbini, the birthplace of the Buddha, and midway between Chitwan and Bardia National Parks, Sarus crane is seen, the largest crane species in the world, standing some six feet tall and weighing over 12 pounds. Woodpeckers are abundant in the Middle Hills decidu deciduous forests. Some examples of accommodation in the lowland national parks. This in Bardia National Park is Tiger Tops Kanali Lodge, the oldest established jungle lodge in Bardia, and still probably the premier property with excellent guides and staff. Just outside Chitwan National Park, 
and at the far less touristed western end of the park is Tiger Top's Taru Lodge, designed in the style of a traditional Taru, the local people, longhouse. It is your home from home while in western Chitwan. The habitat in lowland parks of Nepal is just simply amazing. It is the jungle book writ large. Nepal's work to protect significant areas of this landscape is highly to be commended. Leaving the plains and venturing back into the hills, this is Tiger Mountain Pokhara Lodge, set on a ridge a thousand feet above the valley floor on the edge of Pokhara, another dune valley in the Himalayan mid-hills. We draw on the inspiration of both our founding partners, Tiger Tops for its conservation ethos, and Mountain Travel, pioneers of trekking in Nepal, for their walking and hiking experience. At Tiger Mountain Pokhara Lodge, we have a camera trap, and here are a few species seen. Apologies for the picture quality. Naturally, camera traps are for identification rather than artwork. This female common leopard was photographed in the evening after I saw her outside my room during the 2020 lockdown. I slightly worry about her speculative gaze towards my room. Her cub was following just outside the picture. This is a jungle cat. We once found one snoozing in the main lodge. In the hills, barking deer are the main deer species, and we see and hear them regularly at Tiger Mountain. Rhesus macaque are the commonest monkey species around the lodge, permanently striving to raid our neighbours' farms. The common or grey langur is a largely arboreal species seen more rarely around Tiger Mountain. My apologies for the picture quality here. This is a mask civet, one of three species seen around the lodge. This is the large Indian civet. And here is the smallest, the Asian palm civet. Yellow-throated martin are commonly seen in the lodge grounds. A variety of snakes are found at Tiger Mountain, including this copper-headed trinket snake, basking in the sun on the lodge terrace. Our guide Hurry was startled to meet this young king cobra while on a walk near the lodge. A wide variety of Palearctic and Oriental butterflies are seen in the naturalised grounds of the lodge, like this common map. Here we see three more showy butterflies of various sizes, a peacock pansy, great mormon and mandarin blue. Nepal has some 600 butterfly species and over 2,000 moths. Among the most dramatic seen at Tiger Mountain is Actias Minas, the Malaysian moon moth. Two more impressive examples photographed here are Actias Salini, the Indian lunar moth, on the left, and Samia caningii, the wild airy silk moth, on the right. Tiger Mountain Prokhara Lodge forms an ideal base in the Middle Hills for birding, day hikes or just plain relaxation as an interlude to the more active elements of any Nepal wildlife trip. With our bird list at over 360 species for the Pokhara Valley and with over 270 species of butterfly sighted in the lodge grounds of seven acres, guides Jalak, Hari and Sajan are always on hand to explore and share their abundant knowledge with our guests. At Tiger Mountain, the convivial centra fi central fire of a winter evening is your place to relax and share stories of the day's adventures and sightings. In the warmer weather, the spacious verandas and outside seating areas fulfil the same function. Thank you for watching this presentation on Nepal and its abundant wildlife.